okay, so then season six, they came back, and, and this is like, I think one of my proudest moments of her, is they came back and they offered her like a crazy, crazy deal. They're like, if she just came back for one episode, they're like, just come back for one episode, and we'll promote your music on the show, and we'll do the sound card and all that stuff, so people can find your music. They offered, you know, spin-off show, right. yeah, everything. They, they throwing everything. Everything. everything for one last episode. And um, I'm just like, man, this is a lot to like, I'm in New York. Um, the lawyer, at the, he's in New York, she's, she's down south, we're all going back and forth. The network, she's in that refusing to talk to them, so they're calling us like, what did she say, what did she say? <laughs> so like the first time I told him, I'm like, yo, she said no, right? So then he's mad, he's throwing a tantrum. I'm telling her, she's like, ha good man. <laughs> good for him. Right? Like, now you can see how I be feeling, right? right? So then they call back, they upped it off even more. So she's just like, good. Yeah. Like, sure. and then was just like, you know what? Man, I'm not selling out for no. I don't care how much money they throw out there. I'm not selling out. And then, um, it's funny. So, so you know, walked away from it. I'm just like, mm, right before Christmas, like, <laughs> like, right before Christmas, yo, like, but, hey. Alright, you know what I mean? Santa's still gonna come, but you know, but he ain't coming like he was. He coming like, like, like I was would come. Like yeah. he would have came, you know, but it was just like, alright. And then, like, maybe like a few months ago, I was just like, yo, you know, in, in retrospect, how much harm would it have done, you know? Like, and she's like, I think about that all the time. Like, all the time, like, yo. We, but a conscience is clear. Sometimes, yeah. you know, we're conscious. Yeah, she's like, but you know what? There's no price of not selling out. And that's one thing about Duchess. She's never sold out. Like, she's had many an opportunity to sell out. Like, and she's never taken none of them. She's, you know, still like, you know, relatable. She still will be, we go to places and like, you know, we've been on the road with people that have to leave the next day and the promoter be like, yo, my kid's birthday's tomorrow, by the way. And she'll be like, let's go to the birthday party. You know, show up to kids' birthday parties. She's done going with promoters. One of the dudes, his baby was born. And, and, and she left the club with him to go to the, to the, to the, to the hospital. Like, you know, like she's still like that same person. Like, I've never sold out. I've never become Hollywood. I'm still, I'd be sometimes like, Duchess, we, we don't need to be in this neighborhood. We need to go back to the hotel. Right. And she'll be like, Man, shut up, six. Like, I'm with my peoples right now. I remember one day waking up like, like, because after because after we did the event, we went out and chilled and I, I got hammered. I remember waking up in in, in an SUV with some strippers, <laughs> and I look out the window and she's riding along the, the SUV on a motorcycle, what? and I'm like, what the hell's going on? So she's always just she's she's always just stayed like the same person like her whole career and, and I think that's why she's gonna continue to just just go far and just yeah, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, we good, man. That's good. That's good. Thank, Thank you. Man. Appreciate we you. Really appreciate Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Some good behind the scenes <laughs> good behind <laughs> the lady herself. Very special. All right, guys, stay tuned. That just be up next.
Style Show. I'm Bo. And I'm Chris. And today we have a very, very special guest. A, a lovely very guest. special guest. As you can see, the uh, Duchess of Ink, Miss Duchess Lattimore herself. Hey! <laughs> we in the shop. <laughs> we in the shop. We have yeah, this, 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 this is, is how it works. This yeah. is how it goes down in here. We it wanted it raw. Look, no, we wanted it raw. She gave it to us raw. So we, we, we all good. It's a family atmosphere here. You know how it is at home. So here we go. Miss Duchess, What's first of all, thank you for having us in your shop. We you really coming. appreciate it. Now, I'm going to get down to brass tap. You do a lot with the young ladies. How do you, what, what is your, like, what is your main goal when you talk to these young ladies trying to give them that women's empowerment? What, what, what is your main thought process? Mm, my main thought process is a lot of those young girls look up to me and they like, when I grow up, I want to be like you. And, like, to me, that's a disappointment because I would want them to be far greater than what I am and the things that I've accomplished. So, I always like to be the, I like to give them the real and the raw because what people see on TV is, not what's real. Right. So when they get to really knowing the real, they like, okay, now I, I, I get it. So I, I try to just give them a chance to understand that I'm human because when people feel that they have that level of relation with you, it's, it's easy for them to feel more confident in themselves because they realize like, dang, you just a woman like me. Well, you know what, I'm glad you said that, you know, it's not what you actually see. Um, I watched some past interviews that you've done, and you kind of mentioned um, the manipulation in the reality TV right. industry. So, how concerned should we be with this? We should be very concerned because this is what I tell people all the time: um, analyze things. So, for example, how many white reality shows exist right now? That's a good question. <laughs> And I reality I TV began right. in their culture right. with the real world and your that's, token that's, that's one right. Negro. That's right. right. Now it's nothing but black people in all of these reality shows. For me, especially having like a college background, that makes me want to be like, okay, so why is this? It makes you analyze it a little bit deep, deeper. Jersey Shore, you know what I'm saying? Like. All those Big things brother. went away. Right. Those yeah, things kind of went away. All went away. Um, Survivor, even. You know what I'm saying? All of these type shows, they never let us be a part of those shows. Right. But now, if you look at reality TV, especially the ratings, all of the ratings occur in black urban reality TV programming. Make a good point. I never thought about that. Yeah. You, you know, now that you're saying that, and. Uh, um, I'm not sure if you're still doing it or not, but I understand that you may be working on a documentary. Can, can, how much I'm can you so talk to us about that? About Tell it. us. You, you look inside. You're so smiling. Right. Right. How much can you? But she so always got this smile on her face. I don't mean to cut that No, off. but I, I'm, I'm so excited. Like for me, especially walking away from Black Ink, now I'm able to do things that I'm passionate about. So that's when things really have a, a real value to you. Oh yeah. Like that's what makes it light me up like that because it's like, dang, I really love this shit. And when I see it come to fruition, I'm gonna be like. I can't believe it. Like, I dreamed this. Just like this shop. I dreamed this. And look at it. Are you currently working on it now, though? Say it again. Are you currently working on a documentary yes. now? Yes. It's called The Real in Reality. The Real in Reality. Yes. Okay, and, okay. and I'm, I'm reaching out to all different type of reality stars that people might remember, might not remember. Like, what happened to their life? People don't understand the effects of this. I like to call it institution. I like this over. Like, yeah. people don't understand the effects of what this does to people. Just like with fame, just like, like you know, with, with musicians and actors and people in that side of entertainment, their fame is attached to characters, not to who they are, supposedly, in the real world. It's just who people have created, like Beyonce is Beyonce on stage, right. you know what I'm saying? But when she go home, she's a mother, she's a sister, she's right. a wife, she's a, she's none of those things. She's just the woman that she is. Right. And I think that a lot of times people don't realize that like the effects of this can be detrimental. You have people that get addicted to drugs, that kill themselves, people that can't deal with fame, people that can't deal with the level of harassment that is attached to this lifestyle. Like, it's so many different things that are attached to this that people don't realize. Right. They take it for granted. How do you, speaking of that, how do you, how do you manage to kind of 
keep yourself out of that that hole they try to drag you in. Because I know when it comes to social media <coughs> times, people come at you about whatever you do. You're doing a music project, so I'm sure there was folks that, that, that want to talk about that. Like, what's she doing music? Who do they think she is? Right. Now she Cardi B. Da, 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 da. I was doing music while I was on Black Ink. I was doing music before I was on Black Ink. I just never took it serious enough to allow it to be heard. For me, like, that's what I love about life. I love about loving yourself. When you love yourself, you don't give a damn about the limitations. Of the it can be whatever it is you can do. If you have that level of self-love and confidence, somebody can be like, she's trash at this, she's this and that. That's your opinion, sweetheart. Like, you really love yourself so much to the point where that shit don't matter because for every one person that don't li like it or love it, it's 10 that do. So, you know, for me, it's like I have control of my creative my creative expression now. And having that level of control, that's why I want to do music. I'm going to ask you this question. I got this shit from how I set it off. Do you feel free? Because you seem like you feel extremely free right now. I feel like I look free. I feel free. I mean, you really do. I don't look like the same person that was on TV. Yeah. Like, people, when they see me, they be like, oh my gosh, you look so good. I didn't think you would look like this in real life. Like, TV was a major stress because I was in an environment that I wasn't supposed to be in. Like, I got to be around like-minded individuals, people that come from similar backgrounds. Those are the things that help me feel But outside of this shop, I'm surrounded by my influences of elevation that, that help me want to be better and have higher goals and focus on doing shit that I really need to get, get done. Like, it's just different when you change your environment. I know, I'm from Taco. Where did you first know you wanted to be an entrepreneur? So, I have a master's degree in business, undergraduate degree in marketing from North Carolina ANT. Aggie yes, yes, Pride. Yes, yes, Aggie Pride. We both went there. Yes, and um, like I had a certificate in entrepreneurship. Um, Dr. McEwen was my professor, and I knew I was going to be an entrepreneur when I was in college because in college I never had a job. I did hair. I did locks. Six told us about that. Like everybody that had locks when I was at ANT, nine times out of ten, I did their hair because that's all I did. I didn't have a real job. I didn't know what that felt like. I tried to work at this place called Infos in I worked there. Honey, I worked it there. It was not a good. It was not a good experience for me. So that didn't last long. And then, you know, hair was just something that I was good at. I knocked them out. Thirty minutes, I'm done. So I made. I made so much money doing hair. I had such a good life in college, and my mom and them didn't have to take out not one dollar. Like I had a wonderful college experience, and I worked hard, and I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed my money. Like it gave me a work ethic that was so beneficial to what I do as a tattoo artist because they're both service industries. So it's about like how you how you make people feel and, and the level of service that you can provide for them, and knowing your value and like that shit. You know, okay, in addition to being in the school of business and economics, Dean Craig, under Dean Craig, like, yes, you know what I'm saying? Like, having those type of influences, of course. It's going to make you uh, an amazing person, but the hustle side of me was that, doing hair and just, I had a, a crib on the window across from Moses Cone on the corner. It was a duplex, so I had a house, and in the back of my house was a dentist's office. So all of my clients could park in the dentist's office. Right. I had the kitchen with the back door entrance, and everything else was separated. You didn't even know what was back there. Right. And I had everybody right in there to, that's how I did. But, well, well, that's a, that's a good transition. You were talking about your, your life and your uh, uh, HPC. Now, I'm not sure if this is still in play or not, but I understand you were going to use HPC. Yes. Yeah. 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 Y
good stick loyalty right now to try to work that out and get everything in the plan in motion. Like, so anybody out there that come from different HBCUs, please reach out to me so that I can have access to, to bringing it to your campus because, like, without that, it's like no purpose. I want people to want it. I want people to. What, what, what can they expect on the tour? So the tour is just kind of like, so Trinidad James is my homeboy and he has this song called Black Excellence. And I love it. I love the song. And the song is just about, like, how as black individuals we have to, like, elevate ourselves so that we can elevate each other like it, it, it makes us all better when we feel good about ourselves when we when we doing good shit for ourselves when we can motivate somebody else like it's just a, a continuous holistic <laughs> elevation if we can all get on that one accord so for us it's literally bridging entertainment into education and I work with uh, Young Face and Smiling I'm on their board and it's such a beautiful thing I'm also on the board of ITF which is um, Inspire the Fire here in Charlotte. But Young Faces Smiling is out of Harlem. Um, Dr. McClarity, she runs that an amazing organization. But it basically just helps people to understand how important entertainment is to these kids. And that you have to use some level of it to intrigue their, their educational desire. Like sometimes that, that's what some of them need. Some of them don't need that. But to them, that struggle and that find so much interest in that, why not use that as an added tool to, to bridge that gap of, of them really learning what they need to learn to have life skills to go out here and do whatever they want to do that sounds and be awesome. successful in life. That's awesome. That's now, with tattoos, since you know, you've been doing this a while, how important in saying that, you know, with music and all that, because it kind of ties together. I remember having a conversation with a guy years ago about the whole Allen Iverson coming into the league transition and making this thing a different, I don't want to say animal, but it was a different beast. Yes. Because when AI came in, cats weren't wearing the tattoos like that. They weren't wearing the cornrows and all of that. So how important is that expression of tattoos now, that do you think now? It's even more important now because, okay, it has transcended through sports and entertainment, but why can't that also transcend in the graphic design, the, the news anchor, the, the video girl, the actress? Like, to me, it's like we got all of these stigmas and some of these individuals are so creative. That's why they have these, these stories that they have on their bodies that they can tell. And I think that instead of using it as a shield, it should be used as something that, because now the millennials are taking over. And the millennials have a strong idea of individualism as far as what they wear, how they eat, like there are vegans that are by choice at 15 and 16 and their parents eat meat. Like there, this exists in our society now. Like the millennials are individuals and because that nature is a part of our society, it has to transcend in all facets, not just in education because those are the people that are going to be the lawyers, the judges, the doctors, the board of education, the mayors, you know what I'm saying? And just because that person has tattoos does not make them any less or more qualified. It's just an expression. But that is true. And I, and I feel the same way about language to a degree. Just because a person speaks a certain way, whether it's in slang or broken English or whatever it is, that does not dampen the amount of intelligence Absolutely. that that person holds. I'll tell you this, so my mom has a lot of brothers and sisters. And my Aunt Tonda, me and my Aunt Tonda used to butt heads all the time. Because I'm in college, I'm at ANT, I'm taking world religions, I'm around all these right. other different people right. from all over the world. I come home, I done cut off all my hair. I'm this whole new person and I'm like, y'all shouldn't eat this because of that. Like, I'm already, back then I'm on that. Back then I'm on that. I'm not perming my hair. My hair gonna be nappy, just like God made me. Like, I'm just changing things and in an instant. She was so like, who do you think you are? Like, we got literally almost to a fight. And we get along, so like, that's my rock. As, a, as an adult woman. So it's so beautiful for me to see that, like, in me going through all of those changes at that point in my life, she, she doesn't even have an eighth grade education. She's 
she's still one of the most intelligent women I know. One of the best teachers ever. Ever. And, and my grandma used to always say, baby, you know the best classroom is at the foot of an L. Like, I was a CNA when I graduated high school. So I've been around old people a lot. And it's something that a lot of people will be like, uh -uh. I'm 18 years old working at the Bryant Center, wiping asses, like lifting people on a Hoya lift, you know what I'm saying, feeding people, all kind of stuff that people that my age, they like, I'm about to go to the, the mall, I'm about to do this. Like, I thought I wanted to be a nurse. That job taught me I didn't want to do that, but I needed that experience. So, you know what I'm saying, being around older people and having that level of experience fall into your lap freely that's free game you gotta use that shit you gotta use that shit so every person that that I'm around now I'm I'm that person but these Millennials they don't know what that means and now we have to translate that story to what that means for them so we can't we can't lock people out because of, of tattoos and, and shit like that Another thing my grandma used to always say to me is, um, cause everybody would be like, I can't believe she do tattoos. She grew up in the church and da 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 da. And, and my grandma, she used to always just be like, baby, God need people in every industry. Like I can be in my tattoo chair talking to my customer. We can have a full on conversation about God. And some of them might know God, some of them might not know God. Like sometimes we have some amazing conversations sitting in that chair. I've heard sitting over here waiting on you. We heard a good cop like when you were talking to that young man over there, I was like, I wanted to come over there, but you were handling that thing. Yeah, no, 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 no. So I have no idea how you, that got started. You gave you gave him like like I've talked to people like that. Younger guys don't get there's a time and a place for everything. And sometimes you do have to change a little bit. You don't always want to, but you know, this this, this is this even for me. I'm a female boss and with all of these men in what I thought was going to be an all-female shop. So like, I have to assume a higher level of respect and authority with them because I need them to know that I have had it harder than all of y'all ever did. And for me to accumulate the level of success and respect in this industry that I have, you damn sure should take some of my advice. I've been through the fucking trenches. I want you to survive the trenches. I want you to be able to stand up through them. I was crawling. Like, you know, so I just want to build a strong team, man. Sometimes that shit is tough, but sometimes I'm right and sometimes I'm wrong. Just like we could have, I had to apologize. And I'm okay with apologizing. Why? Because I need them to understand that it's okay to be wrong, too. Like, if we all going to get along in here and we all going to really try to build this brand and have a level of respect for this business, then compromise has to come with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Question. What's your favorite food? Y'all should give me a gun and let me tattoo some of you. My favorite food? What's your favorite food? Fried rice, now. That's my favorite. I would have never guessed that. I would have never guessed that. I'm vegetarian, so. Let me ask you. Oh, you're missing right here. Pescatarian. Pescatarian. And it kind of combines with what we were just talking about. Yeah. You take amazing pictures, all types. But your high-end fashion pictures, are like you know, a high-end. How does how did, first of all, how did you get into the body part of it? I never wanted to. I never wanted to do a lot of this stuff. Let me tell you. Oh, you try to run from things. I ran from a lot of opportunities in my life to be in greater positions than I am now. And I kept running. I kept running. And God, like literally. I'm, I'm in this because that's where he put me. Growing up, I was taunted at school. I was called the ugly duckling. I was all skinny and like girls was, I always had like the bullying. I was the one being bullied, but I was a smart girl. So they always wanted my help, but they always want to pick fun at me too. So it's like, and I was an athlete. So once we got to the level of sports, it was like, oh yeah. And I'm like a star athlete, 
So oh, it's like, uh, yeah, they like, okay, so we can't play with her like that no more. Like, oh, she, yeah. So I basically had to earn that respect, but it was, it was not something that I thought I would ever be doing because of how people received me growing up. So now when people be like, oh my God, you're so beautiful, I'm like, I would much rather you say I'm so smart. And my daddy, growing up, we never really had like a lot of mirrors in the house, cause he would just be like, you don't want to be vain, like you know. So stuff like that, he never really told us that we were beautiful and stuff like that. Like, and some people might be like, dang, that's it, and it might be a bad thing for some. But for me, it was something that made me okay with when everybody said to me. Now it's like, what value does that really hold? Because he didn't put that on a pedestal, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that's not something that you know a lot of daddies are like. Baby, you so beautiful and this is like that's not what my day like. You shoot them hundred free throws a day. You ran them suicides. All right, like I was on some other shit, but I come from an uh, ex recon marine. So I come from a different, yes, a different level of discipline. So it's just different how I came up. And my mom is like the true epitome of like a Southern belle. She's cooked every day of my life, basically. Your mom is sweet. Though. She's the reason why I cook. She's the sweet. She's the reason why, like a lot of reason why this business. She get on my nerves so bad, like so bad. But she's a lot of the reason why this business is as successful as it is. Like, I have a terrible time management problem with all of the things that I got going on here. Like, the radio station pulling me here and then this going on. So I, I don't take appointments, but when people want to wait, it's like, dang, I hate that they got to wait that long. But my mama entertains. She makes sure that they feel comfortable. She makes sure that, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's just like a, a great situation. And all of my artists respect her. They treat her like mom. They probably, hell, everybody call her mom. She, she take care of my mind. And, most importantly, and like it's just for somebody who really wasn't that much of approval of this tattoo thing, it's beautiful for me to see that she has opened her mind up to being a part of not only the lifestyle of tattoos, but my business too, because this is a weird place to work. And my mom used to teach mentally handicapped adults. This isn't a typical. Let me let me let me ask you this. But what you just said and um, your past experiences, you're exposed you know, to the world. To the degree. And you know, just listening to you here in the shop today and some of the things you were trying to share and broaden people's minds, you know, a little bit. If you had a hundred million dollars, what would you do with it? If I had a hundred million dollars. Yeah, because the only reason I'm asking you that question because I see this ambition here. Drive. You want to leave. You want to. You want. You want something. You ultimately want to do something. Great. It could be many things. I don't know. So that's where that question is coming from. Because money makes things happen. Let me tell you. If I had a hundred million dollars, wow. Great, that would be so amazing too. God, give it to me. He put that in the universe, hey, God. Give hey, listen, it to God, me. I'm with give Duchess me, right God. now. Give it to us. Can I tell you something? I hate to sound like arrogant. Everything I've asked God for, He's given me. I went on a 72 day fast one time. And what I asked God for, in my heart, I, I need it. But then after I thought about it, I felt kind of wrong for asking for it, but I wasn't wrong. But God gave it to me and I thought I would feel a different way. And I was so gracious for how we, see the different, the thing about God is when we ask for things, we expect it to be given to us the way we want it. Right then and how we, yeah, exactly. And it's never like that. And how he gave it to me was so perfect. It was so perfect and it's such perfect peace that I didn't feel like I needed to do anything else. I just felt peace. And like, that's really what you do stuff for. But anything I ask God for, you give me. So God, the 100 million. Thank you in advance, Lord. So when you, when you get it. Yes. When let me you tell get you what it. I'm going to do. Tell me what you going to do. So 25 million for that. 25 million of that, I would create a female boarding school. 
I'm talking about state of the fucking art. I'm talking about the graduates from this fucking school is at MIT, is at Harvard, is at Yale, and they're all melanated. And they all were thrown away. Wow. When I say boarding school, I'm talking about from kindergarten to 12th grade. The moment that they're thrown away, whenever or however you take it care is. of, you take their yours. You got a place to live. You got you got everything at your feet. All the tools that you need to be the greatest at whatever you desire. But you gotta you gotta you gotta commit to whatever it is. You gotta commit to all of the rules. Because that's, that's the number one problem with people with discipline. Especially people that was thrown away. Because they don't understand how things have a order. But I will have a, a boarding school for young girls to be able to come and have their whole, like everything. I'm talking about the best technology, the best food. Like, I, my grandma used to make all of her clothes. I would want them to even have that love. Like, everything needs to be in this school. So if you want to be in fashion, then you're going to make the uniform for the, for the girls. If you want to be in culinary, then y'all going to take care of the kitchen. Like, we're going to really show how it takes a village. And we're going to really have a key component that, that these girls can take that build life skills. That's not just learning, but life skills, too. Because going to school is just going to school. That's not life skills. So that's why a lot of kids, when they graduate from high school, they don't know what to do with their life. Because they weren't taught life skills. They don't know how to go get a job. They don't know how to pay this and, and take care of this and order this and make sure they know how to have a budget and, you know, plan things accordingly and don't live from check to check. Like, I want them to understand how to completely stop their circle of hurt. Because what happens is we have a circle of hurt, and then that girl finds some dude, he get a pregnant, mad young, then she do the same thing to her child, then that child do it, then it's a circle of hurt that just continues to go. But if we stop the circle of hurt and have her actually become functional, a functional dream of her own, then damn, we got people that's going to be great at all different kind of things. The other 25 million. Okay, the other 25 million I would create a creative institute. You know how like community centers don't exist anymore? I would take that 25 million and implant a creative institute which is kind of going to be equivalent to a community center in at least 25 different communities all across the country. And it'll be for those kids that might not be good at math, might not be good at science, might not like English, might not like social studies, but loves television production, but loves technology and can take a computer apart, but can't read that well, but loves how to take things apart and put things back together, like things that allow them to really enjoy being creative. Because I think that's why we don't have so many inventors anymore. Like the Harlem Renaissance was a great time for, for black people in all genres, especially inventors, artists, poets, art, authors, all kind of shit. Why can't we create that again? All it takes is the reason why those people were so great at what they did is slavery had just ended, right? And people are leaving slavery to this place where you can be whatever you want to be. There's no limitations. You just gotta work hard as fuck. But you just worked hard as fuck on the first <laughs> But you gotta work hard as fuck to have this. And you work hard as fuck. And now you're good at it. Now you're great at it. Now, you see white men next to you. They love what you do. But instead of you feeling like the slave that was like this, you feeling like the man or the woman that's like this. And they right there too. And it's like, damn, I actually can do this shit. That's what black people were proving to each other during the Harlem Renaissance. That's what made so many 
other black people so eager and excited about doing and being able to have access to trying that shit. That's what we have to do now. So it's about igniting those fires of confidence. One thing I learned about Beyonce that I fell in love with, like I'm a major Beyonce fan anyway, but I learned that she has a confidence coach for her children. She has a what? A confidence coach. Yes. This person comes and has spends time with their children and they teach them confidence. They tell them how amazing they are. They pour into them. They they build their ego as child. Because I hate people that think that a child shouldn't have an ego. If a child has an ego, then they can become because what the fuck a man got an ego for? The funny part about that, looking at how blue is, I just look at that. That, 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 that little girl is, that is, is confident. She is, she's not afraid of anything. That's what those 25 creative institutes will, will do. They build that confidence. You have 50 million left. 50 million left, 25 million I gotta take care of like mine. And taking care of mine is like so much bigger than what people might think. I gotta take care of my mom. I gotta take care of my, my siblings, my niece and my nephews. That's not gonna take 25 million, but when I say take care of mine, like people that have poured into my life, my tattoo artists here. Say for example, Slim wanna create fucking, like Slim loves real estate. What if I, I give Slim a, a building downtown, like some crazy shit that he can do some great things with. You know what I'm saying? Like, Josie likes to travel. What if I give her, you know what I'm saying? For the rest of her life, she can fly wherever she want to be. Like, I want to give them things that, of course, money has to have. You don't have to have money to have it, but money has no value of what it can bring to their life. And, like, those are the type of, like, my brother loves music. I would get him a hella fine music studio. I'm talking about state of the art shit where everybody that's anybody would want to be recorded and, and allowing him to be a part of their musical experience because that's how much he loves music. My dad, I would probably get him a fitness gym. He loves fitness. Even though he's getting older, he still loves that shit. So I know that he's going to enjoy his old age seeing people enjoy that shit. So that'll be something that'll add to his quality. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, my mama loves my mama, I don't probably just give the girl whatever she wants. She wants, but that's just how she wants. But everybody that's been an integral part six, yo, I owe six to the world. I would have to give six. I probably would have to give six, like, a cool five million to himself, to him and Pete. Six to the single dad. Single dad. He raised his son by himself. I'm gonna tell you, he has the most amazing son you'll ever meet. He's so charismatic. He's caring. He's a man. He's aggressive, but he's nurturing and calm. Like he's intelligent beyond his mind. He's just amazing. I, I, he's gonna want to go to Japan because he's obsessed with Japanese culture. So they'll probably do whatever they're gonna do with that. He might leave and don't never come back. Uh, my daughter's the same. I don't know what it is about Japanese. You know what I'm my daughter's the same. My oldest yeah. daughter's like Yeah, in the last 25 million. The last 25 million. Yeah, did anything for yourself. To be honest, well, you have those projects, but, but just something. Just kind of self, selfish for yourself. Go self. But I'm, I'm going to listen what to you. I'm going to listen to you. If you can buy anything in the world, I'm going to take it. If you buy anything in the world, you got 25 million left. Oh, yeah. You don't have to. Yeah, what would you buy? 25 million, you can buy anything. That's one of those clubs I train system. Uh, <laughs> no, let me, you know, no, let me not say that. No, what I would do is, I would buy, I would definitely buy a transportation system, like a fleet of, of jets and, and planes and shit like that, because everything has to travel. Everything has to get from one place. And if I have that, then I have access to the world. I have access to anything I want. Having that is going to bring me that hundred million right back in an instant. I like the way you think. And, and 
once I get that hundred, once I got that, and I done took care of all that other shit, like, what else is there? Like, I don't gotta do nothing. Like, you know, I ask, I ask myself, how much money will it take for you to make, to never work again, and to just be satisfied with life? Twenty million, and that's not hard. You, you itemize it, you broke it down, and you understand what you how it would happen. It really would take ten. Okay, so you were just the other ten is being great. You're being generous to yourself. You should always try for the best. You want ten? 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 Oh, I know. I'm going to. I'm going to. And I'm so excited about it. I'm so excited about it. I'm so excited about it. It's so many things that I'm doing that it's like, dang, you can't do nothing but smile. Because I could be doing, I couldn't even not be here. I've, I've, I've been very blessed. Let's say that. This year, I almost lost my life. Hell, the year before that, I was juggling, taking my own life. Like, it's been a struggle living through all of these experiences, especially not being prepared for it. That's why the real behind reality is so good. So many kids crave that. They crave that. They desire that. And they don't know what it is. They don't know if they got a, a million followers and 10,000 people say they hate them. How they gonna... Like, if they ain't strong enough, how that will fucking demolish their spirit. They don't know that. How did you... How did you... God, I got a pastor, my pastor Jamila, she's so bomb, that lady is so bomb, what's your pastor's name again, pastor Jamila, I love you so much, you just, what, what, what is she, knows, she knows, Unity, Unity Church here in Charlotte, she is, see because when you like me, people, people that love God, look at you different, the traditional people that love God, she not traditional. She up in the in the church looking fly. Got her bundles, her, her heels on. Bottoms might be red one day. Like she's fly. She also yanked that wig off her perfume too. If it's too hot in that church. Amen. Amen. Like she is a true servant of God, and I think that's the number one thing that people gotta understand when they're talking about religion, especially Christianity, because it's so many people. Like it's, I've been in churches. I've been at my own church, and I grew up in that damn church. I've been on the usher, the children's church, the children's choir. But that's why it's important for, like I said, millennials again. It's important for those millennials to know that it's okay for them to be themselves and still love God. And she the type of pastor that, that they see and that they can feel that. Dang, it's alright. When I go to church, I go to church with a sleeve or something just like this. And guess what? Don't nobody make me feel no different than the next person, than the lady, than the deacon that's sitting over there crying. And it don't make me feel no different. That's what church is supposed to be about. That's what the love of God is really about. It's about allowing people to just be who they are. And I'm going to be honest, being on reality TV, that's one thing that I had to swallow because I was so judgmental of some people on the show. And I'm, I feel so bad about it. But I thank God that I learned something from it and that it made me a better person. Like, who am I to judge any of these people? I sin. No sin is greater than the next. If I fornicated, it's still no different than the nigga that killed somebody. That is true. But to a traditional actually, Christian, less, actually less so. But you feel me? But as a traditional Christian, they gonna make you feel like uh uh. But you gotta be honest to what the 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 word of God is because he'll still if 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 it could be two sinners like they were next to him on the cross, would make any of us different. Like we all have done, we've all, and they had some serious sins to bear. Exactly. So nah, and, and I'm glad that seeing myself do that made me see like, damn, that was so fucked up of you. Because some people see that shit and don't never change who they are. They still be out getting fucked up, turning up, being disrespectful, hurting people's feelings. No, I had to learn how to channel that shit. Cause that was that was unhurt that I was dealing with with myself that I need to face. Once I face it, it was like, damn, I can't look at them no different. That's great. That's a good. 
That's a good start. Yes. Right it is. I mean, this has been an amazing interview. Amazing. And again, we definitely thank you for allowing us. To, this is a beautiful place. If you I got to say, what do y'all think of the shop? It's a oh, beautiful we, we place. We were talking about it earlier. We love the shop. We were like, man, we did cool. I was going to ask you, who, who did this? 18 hours. You did it? Uh, 18 years. I love it. By hand. They did a, they did a great job. Of it. Another thing, what I was going to say was, you getting tattooed, make sure y'all come down. Pretty yeah, make sure you, yeah. Because I'm coming back. I got I got something to cover up. It ain't nothing bad. It ain't no one Yo, thing. Check it. But I got a cover up I'm going to do. If you want a dope experience, and you know I'm in Atlanta. Terrence is down in Raleigh, North Carolina. There's yep. still two major cities. Y'all y'all had the money. Hey, get in your car and roll out. It's only yes. a three-hour drive yes. from Atlanta. Take, come and down here and get a dope experience. And stuff too, so, yeah. you know, like... Maybe we should. Well, we should do a tat We should do a gentleman tattoo event for y'all. That would be dope. That would be dope. I've done. I haven't done anything like that. Like we do a different type of event every month for a different demographic in the community. So I like to have so that everybody understand that like we are around everybody. We don't care who you are, where you come from. It's just like a great environment to be around. It's like love. Yeah, I love it in here. Like, look, look, I can sit in here and listen to the conversation. Look. This is a show all in itself. It is. <laughs> so, all I needed, look, all I needed was a, a glass of, uh, of that brown liquor. I've been right at home. But that's a whole different story. That's a whole different story. But as I was about to say, this has been a great interview. We really appreciate you guys bringing us in, making us feel at home, and let us invade your space with all, yes. all our invaded stuff. Invaded space. Yeah, we did. No, but y'all y'all made it right at home. And nobody complained. But once again, we'd like to say thanks for joining us. And of course, we'll be back next week at the Gentleman of Style Show. And like we always like to say, there is no excuse for good taste. That's ball. I'm preach. And this is Miss Dutch. It's a big. We out of here. Peace. Right. call me sex, you know what I mean? I am um, Duchess's consigliere, if you, if, you, if you may, you know what I mean? Like, it, it on her retainer, her samurai, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, things that have to get done, and she tells me what needs to be done, and, 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 and I'll, you know, get it done, or if she needs advisement on certain things, I'll, you know, do, you know, give her the advisement, and da 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 so, you know, she and I go way back for years, you know, before all the TV stuff, and um, how'd you get the name Six? It's my birth number. Oh, my parents are hippies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I just wanted to say something. I never seen it, nobody tie a tie like that, man. That's smooth. Appreciate <laughs> it. That looks like it's some work. <laughs> it's, it's a little. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's some work. I can't still can't tie a tie to save my life. <laughs> you know, my, my, my dad used to tie all my ties, right? And I would just like pull them over my head. You know, so my father, he passed away like some time ago. And I still have all the ties. <laughs> like, like, why? So I can still to this day, like, you know, I wish he would have just made me learn. But right. he's just like, he's like, get in. He, he's, 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 I would say, like, um, you know, with Duchess, um, I remember she she had she had moved to, you know to New York for a little while after she had graduated from A and T. You know, and, you know, Maggie, you know, Maggie, you know how young get down. Yeah. And um, man, it's some funny stories. 
<laughs> Go ahead, jump right I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, like, so, so, so the day we met, I, I get on the train, and I just finished smoking, so I guess it was all on me, so she said, yo, you know, I just moved over here, where, you know, where can I, you know, can I, I'm trying to meet some people who can, you know, pull up, I'm like, yeah, 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 just hit me up any time. So I'm like, where you from? She's in North Carolina, I just got here, but she was like, can I ask you a question? Can I carry this in New York? It opens up her purse, and I look, I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no, you can't. Like, so this, this is New York. This is New York. She's like, but I'm licensed down south. I'm like, no, New York is a whole. And, you know, so ever since that day, like we, you know, we were, and I'm like, you know, come out the block. You know, we live two blocks away. Then eventually one block away. You know, um, I had a big house. Everybody would crash at my crib all the time, and and and, and I had to. Uh, we get get, get uh, crab legs. We get make crab legs and cornbread. That was our oh, thing. Oh man, crab, crab legs, legs and cornbread. cornbread. Now you just told me something that we <laughs> yeah. never ever that's the, heard that's that the South, That's the South meat something. I yeah, don't, that was I don't like, know what yeah. that is. Now, I know she was just like, like, cause I'd be like, yo, I bet everybody hang out at the house. I'm like, yo, what should I cook? She'd be like, crab legs and cornbread. Crab legs and cornbread. So, I, so I got the crab legs. She made them. I made the corn. Like, yo, you make the best cornbread. Like, we do, we do. So we ended up eating that like every day. That's how I got this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and then A&T um, A contacted her and asked her to come back to school. They're like, you know, your credits will transfer over, you can finish, get right. the master's. Right. And you know, the, you know, everybody was just like, yo, you know, go ahead, do it, do it. Should I stay in New York and get it, should look for a job or should I? During that time at A&T, she calls me up one day and she's like, um, yo, because she used to do dreads. And that was her hustle. You know, she would do, do the twist and, and lock people's hair up. Right. And she's like, yo, I just found a new hustle. I'm just like, what's that? She was like, you know, I met, I was just getting a tattoo, and I'm asking the guy how much he makes, and I'm like, you know what, I could do that, and I'm like, yeah, you know, you could draw, you know, yeah, you could do anything you put your mind to, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So then, like the next day, she's like, yo, I went and bought a tattoo gun, I just did a tattoo on myself, and I'm just like, all right, all right. The next day, yeah, the next day, the, the next day. This is, she's always been like this, always like super focused, like she just charges into things, right? So then, which is funny because then she's also super cautious. So she's like, Phew, you know, like either one extreme one, to the to other. The other. Yeah. So the day afterwards, she calls me and says, I started my job at the tattoo shop. And I'm like, Dutch, you can't just start tattooing people like in two days. Like it doesn't work like that. She's like, nah, I showed him my work, he hired me. And I'm just like, you know, I don't know if it's a good idea. This is people's skin, this is permanent, you know. I don't, and she's like, no, I'm doing it. And I'm just like, you know, so, like, you know, like, you know, sometimes people have this, they say give, tap, I don't know what it is, but it's just something that you were born to do, and you can just do that. Not everybody can do it. And, but she just, she just jumped right into it, and I was just like, all right, I'm just going to wait for the phone call, like, yo, I, I need some money because these people are suing me. Right, right. <laughs> Like yo, we gotta we gotta get it. Just raise some GoFundMe, whatever. You know what I mean? Hey. So like, she but she never had a problem. She just got better and better and better. And then and she was smart because she she would told me later like I knew what I could do and what I couldn't do. Right, right, right. So I wouldn't accept what I couldn't do. I would just do what I could do best and build up. You know what right. I mean? Mm -hmm. You know. So part of that process, I mean, at one point was. Um, People always say to me, how come you don't have more tattoos, you know? That is yeah, true. That is you know, and, and that's because at one point I volunteered to be like a test canvas. <laughs> that's where this is from. Uh, but that's hot though. Right? Which is hot. hot. Yeah. But it, it was me going, I was, I'm at her house and I'm laying like this, right? right. So <laughs> and she's above me like, stand still, stand still, stop wiggling. Stop moving! I'm like, it hurts! <laughs> I was just like, all right, that's, that was it for me. That, that was like, I was just like, okay. Now, was that your first tattoo or was that? That was my third. Your third, okay. And I haven't been back in the seat since. <laughs> but, um, but, she, but she definitely excelled and then, you know, the opportunity to do the show came up and she was just like, you know, I'm nervous about doing this. I'm a private person. I really don't want right. to, you know, put myself out there in public, but, you know, they're saying they won't do the show. If I don't do the show, right, and I don't want to let everybody else down, and I was just like, ah, you know, I understand you can't live for others, but that's loyalty. Right. So you know, she's just like, you know what? I'm not gonna hold everybody else up. I'll just do the show. And she did the show, and um, season one, 
I, I remember I remember us arguing with them about a number of things, but she was just like, you know what, let's not argue too much. Um, she was very disciplined, right? And, and that's just was very like organized in like the way she thinks and put a plan together and was like, I need you to execute this plan just like this. Right? And executed her plan within a month after the show. Every weekend she was booked in a new city doing appearances. Just right. just right. like that. Right. Cause we she she said we have to make the system simple for people to find me and make sure that we're out there. And it was like she and, and she wouldn't even promote herself. You know what I'm saying? It'd be like she's like, I'm gonna go out there. Yes, yeah, annoying all these people like every five I gotta take stand there for hours taking pictures. But she'd take all the pictures so that the people would tag, you know, they tag they put it out there, people right. see that, okay, she's out there, she's doing stuff, and the promoters would just keep calling and calling and calling and calling. And I mean, I can't give out numbers, but I mean, she made more from just doing appearances right. and stuff like that. And then clothing companies wanting to do clothing deals and this deal and that deal. In the first year, she made more from that than she made from the show. TV show. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, so she's always been smart. You know what I mean? Always been smart. Um, let me let me ask you this question. On the business side of it, mm -hmm. and you handle the business for her. Mm -hmm. she, she needs something done. She tells you what it, you, you you make sure it happens. Have to. What is your greatest tool on that side of it? When it comes to getting things done, what's your greatest tool? My greatest tool, um, well, my greatest motivation is fear of duchess. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes all the other tools just kind of manifest themselves. I would say, like, though, the best tool is that, um, of everything is, 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 a, is a smart approach. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, you know, like, when she and I talk, we always make sure that we don't, Oh, ask for too much. <clears throat> never, but never sell ourselves short. Right. You know what I mean. Come in with a, a professional aura. Like, um, is that is that difficult to gauge? Because as you progress, you know, with the experience and business and exposure, you get more and more popular. Right. That means you're close. You know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, of course, goes up. That, but that gauging, goes up. You're gauging it. But, but gauging but, it, but right? But you're trying to keep a balance where you're not out of bounds, but you want to stay right. So that in bounds. so that we're able so that right. we, so that we're able to actually accommodate people's needs and what right. they want. You know what I mean? Because we are, we, we understand desire is infinite, resources are finite. You know what I mean? But at the same time, we, 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 we've accomplished a lot by being flexible and being like fluid, you know what I mean? Rather than being rigid all the time. You know, what I've seen some people just be very rigid and then it's like they don't achieve, you know what I mean? It's hard to move. They can't, they can't even right. move. Right. But, but, but that approach, of, of being fluid, of being affable, and being 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 you know available to people, you know, in ways that other people are not. I think was was one of the biggest assets that we had in keeping it where, like she'll tell you, like like you know she 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 walked away from season six, and I'll tell you a funny story about that. Like, um, but she's still all around, everywhere, every week. is still you know people still are because. They're like, you know, out and about and being seen and being invited to all types of places and events because she's always, you know, um, maintained that level of, of, of openness and like with people, um, you know, we make sure that also, I think, is it, I don't know if we call it a tool, but um, being involved with a lot of charity stuff and stuff for young women and things like that, it, it's also an asset because it, it, when you give back, people will still want to give to you. You know what I mean? And that, that, was, that was another question, you know, and that you bring that up. How do you guys, because I know she does like to speak with young ladies, she believes in the women empowerment mm -hmm. and making sure that ladies, you know, carry themselves in a certain way. How do you guys kind of balance that with, you know, the tattoo world for a long time has always had this stigma of just wow, 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 wow. Mm -hmm. But the reality is it's, it's art. And you are who you are. It doesn't mean you're wow. Mm -hmm. It's just a, it's a situation of art. So how does she, how do you guys balance that? I, I think the balance comes in, I think very early, very early we discussed, and, 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 and not that, being fake, but the character that we wanted to present to the world. Right. You know what I mean? And, and we wanted to show the world that a woman can be sexy and still inked up and tatted, you know, but still carry themselves like a lady. You know what I mean? And be like, just because I'm tatted up, then you know, I might want to show them off. Doesn't mean I'm not a lady. Doesn't mean I'm not educated. 
that means, you know, I should be disrespected. I still treat people with respect. I'm still a business owner. So it's like, I think when you show people that you're not a one-dimensional character, it almost, it, it intrigues them a lot more. You know, like, like you know why I used to, uh, uh, an example of that is like Snoop Dogg. And I'm like, exactly. Snoop Dogg's crossed a lot. <laughs> Snoop Dogg would be on TV with Martha Stewart. Yeah. And then, you know, promoting marijuana. Right. Yeah. And then he's coaching kids in football, football. And then he's talking about make America Crip again. Right. You know what I mean? All like the same week. And then I'm doing yeah. a gospel And it's all good. And it's all good. It's all but good. I, I think that's the great thing about what we need to, 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 to open our minds to is that the world is not what we once thought it would be. You have to be one way. The dimensions of the world are so infinite. It's, it, it's not you can be this and then nothing else. You can be this. Because you remember back in the day when, you know, if you were an athlete or an actor, but then you decide you want to be a singer or a rapper, it was like nobody wanted to listen to you. Right. But you have the same skills that this that, other person has. Right. So it's, it, it, I, I think that's, you know, one of the, the, the things I, I liked about her, not knowing her, and not really watching her from the show aspect, but just watching how she moved. Mm -hmm. She moved in a way like, it's about this business. I want to do the business. The show was a great tool, if you, you want to say. But I want to do business. I want to do the things that, that's me. You know, so I, I you know. But. I mean, it's funny, because business-wise, I mean, season one of Black Gate Crew, she was already talking about, like, like, how we're gonna franchise this in a few years, and right. she already had like five year plans and all that stuff ready, you know, for that. You know, she ended up, you know, creating her own space, which is wonderful. Um, and there are a lot of opportunities, you know, um, with her expanding Pretty and Ink that I won't talk about. But as you talk about like the dimensional thing, um, I don't think it was even as much of a business play as much as it just was, you know, giving people like a, 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 a I guess it was business then if you think about it, but a character that they could believe in first, you know what I mean? She was just like, I want to show people that, you know what, you can, you know, especially women, that you could be all these different things. And it's just so funny because I think about like a music project that, you know, she's working on now. I know some of the songs already got, you know, got leaked out there. Um, it's interesting because... Like when I talk to people and I, you know, we started putting the team together and they're like, Dutchess is doing music now and they don't know, Dutchess used to rap like back in the day. Right. Yeah. yeah I, 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 I remember this is, I'm talking about like, this is like, what was, I think it was Summer Jam 08. We were all going to Summer Jam and she just started freestyling in the car over this little Wayne um, mixtape. But we were like, huh? What? <laughs> like, <laughs> is that? You know what I mean? She was honestly, she was supposed to put out music um, with DJ Paul from V6 Mafia. Mm -hmm. Like back in 2013, and um, you know, just for personal reasons, she, she she put it off to the side. So I know a lot of people are like gonna look at it. Oh, you're trying to be like Cardi B? No, she was doing this like for years. You know what I mean? For you know, for a minute. But um, even like with that project, it shows a level of diversity. Like when people hear it by you know in the in the in the, in the summer fall, that's interesting because that same level of diversity plays out. Where it's like you know what? You're doing the R&B stuff. You're doing the the hard stuff. You're doing the top, you know, Z100, top 40 stuff, but it doesn't come off um, phony. Right. Exactly. Because you've always been a person that has showed that there are different sides of you, and you express yourself in different manners, you know what I mean? And, and that's what I think is one of her biggest strengths, you know, as, as, as an artist and as a businesswoman. You know, um, I think that's one of the reasons why she wanted to leave the show, because you know, after like season of after season of us sitting down and having meetings and, and her walking in there and saying like, and, and I'm a witness, she'd walk in there and say, this season, I want to be portrayed in this manner. And, and, and she would have to go over all different ideas and we present them like these all the things that are going on that we think could achieve this goal. And they'd be like, yeah, Duchess, yeah, Duchess, we're all down for women empowerment, we're gonna make you look great. All that stuff would get thrown to the editing floor. And they would take other stuff and be like, well, we just need you to shoot a scene like this. And But then we're still gonna use the, the other right. stuff. And this is reality. This is, yeah, right. <laughs> so she'd be like, you know what, I gotta give to get. So I'm gonna do, but then every time, the stuff that she did that was really like great, powerful stuff, yeah. you know, cause they don't, you know, we don't see the show, and she doesn't right. see the show until it comes on. Right. So she'd be watching like every season, like, what are they gonna show me with the little kids? Or like, right. like, like, what, 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 what,
You know what I mean? The funny part is, like, I started watching the show later on. Um, I got turned on to it. And when I came in, I think the first part I saw, a couple, I saw a couple of episodes, but when I saw her really the first time, truly, was when she came to North Carolina and she was around her family. That made me start watching because I saw the relationship she had with her dad and just, and even with her mom and just the way that she was. Of course, I'm from North Carolina, so you know, gotta love that. But you know, just her being at home, it was just a great, it was just a great look, you know. And I was like, yeah, you know, because I think that's something that we miss on TV. You know, those great looks. It's need to show those other things. And I thought that showed her in a great light, showed her, you know, a family oriented person, showed her heart. You know, she had a smile on her face this big when she saw her dad. So that, that's the stuff that I like to see on TV. So. And, and it's funny you say that because that was her whole intention with wanting to introduce her family. Um, Cause she was like, you know what, I, I, you know, my family is not the Huxables, you know what I mean? Right. You no, know, we got our problems like, problems, like yeah. everybody else. But I want people, I want people to just see a family environment. At least know that that's where I come from, cause they'll understand me better. And then it's just like you said, a good look for like TV, like because. You know, you got everybody else on the show was like, I don't know this parent, I don't know that parent, or I hate my parents, or, you know, I hate my mama, personally, mama, and right. stuff that's just like, yo, like, she was just like, no, nah, I, I, I want something different. You know, I, I want my image to be family, because she's a, you know, she's a southern girl. Oh, yeah. You know? And then, like I said, when, when even those situations she felt were becoming corrupted, that's what also led to her decision to leave, because she's like, you know what, now it's like, you know, you want to film me with my family, but you want to even take those experiences and try to make them more ratchet, more dramatic, you know what I mean? And that's what she just was like after season five. She's like, I'm going to give them what I want one last time.